best known of all German armoured cars was the heavy eight-wheel series introduced in 1936. While this new design series inherited the earlier six-wheeled roll designation, with the three variants on the eight-wheel chassis retaining the SDKFZ231, 232 and 263 number sequence, it was distinguishable from the former by the addition of the suffix 8RAD. Choosing to opt on this occasion for a purpose design chassis, the eight-wheeled series was without doubt the most sophisticated armoured car in the world. Although the chassis of the 8 Rad was built by Bussing Nag, oversight of the project and manufacture of the armoured bodies was undertaken by Deutschenberg of Kiel, with final assembly the responsibility of the F. Shishao Company of Elbing. Between 1936 and September 1943, a total of 847 machines left the production line. Eight-wheeled armoured cars of the 231 series saw service from the Polish campaign through to the defeat of Nazi Germany. Allocation of this heavy armoured car was dependent upon the formation operating it. The largest number served in the Panzer formations where each division received an allotment of 12, while a motorised division received 6 and a lorried infantry brigade just 4. These operated in tandem not just with the aforementioned light car series, but also with supporting troops on motorcycles with machine guns mounted on sidecars. The 8RAD 263 employed the hull of the 231 series with the armoured body extended upwards to provide a large crew compartment wherein was carried long-range 100 watt medium wave radio equipment. Employed by the communications detachments of Panzer and motorised divisions, the powerful radio equipment on board allowed the rapid dissemination of new orders following study of the latest intelligence on enemy forces and dispositions. One of the best sequences of film showing armoured cars in action comes from the operations of the reconnaissance detachment of the 1st SS Division Leibstandarte Adolf Hitler during the Balkans campaign in April 1941. A mixed detachment of light 221s and eight-wheel 232 radio cars and 231 standard reconnaissance vehicles is seen moving stealthily through a Greek town where they've been giving chase to retreating British forces. Noteworthy are the names, such as sidelets, placed on some of the vehicles by their crews, a practice that was much less common on German vehicles than found on British or American machines. During this campaign, the reconnaissance detachment of the Leibstandarte was under the command of Sturmbannführer Kurt Mayer, who received the Knight's Cross for this command. Having discovered that the British forces had evacuated by sea, he commandeered a number of fishing boats, loaded them with the advance guard of the detachment, including armoured cars, and followed them, later capturing troops of the 3rd Royal Tank Regiment at Piergos. It was in North Africa that the eight-wheeled armoured cars fully came into their own. Contrary to common belief, the Libyan desert is not all deep sand and provides an admirable surface for wheeled and track vehicles to move fairly swiftly. The armoured cars gave sterling service with the Africa Corps. Operation Barbarossa provided the greatest challenge to the armoured car units as they plunged into the depths of Russia, spreading their limited resources across an ever-widening front. Here, a 222 and a 232 of the 11th Panzer Division of Panzer Group Kleist, operating with Army Group South, are ranging deep behind Soviet lines, gathering vital intelligence on Red Army units during the drive towards Kiev in August 1941. It was in Russia that the full benefit of the specially designed chassis of the 8 Rad series was especially appreciated. Russian roads were rarely tarmacked and during the summer storms heavy rain would transform sandy tracks into quagmires. However, the onset of the terrible Russian winter allowed the eight-wheelers to put their all-wheel drive to best possible use. The late version of the 232 replaced the cumbersome frame aerial with a star aerial to the rear of the hull and another aerial on the turret roof. Armoured cars were also on occasions employed for offensive operations as in the case of this group of 222s under the command of a late model 232 firing on guerrilla forces in the mountains of Yugoslavia.
The last variant on the 2318 Rad chassis entered production as late as December 1942 and was a direct consequence of the need to provide reconnaissance detachments with their own heavier fire support in the face of increasingly strong Soviet and Allied forces. The first 10 233s were converted from 231-232 chassis returned to Germany for overhaul. Thereafter, another 109 new build vehicles were produced before production was terminated in October 1943. The main armament was the 75mm L24 Stummel cannon. The first 233 detachments entered service in North Africa in late 1942 and were extensively employed in the fighting in Tunisia where this film was shot. Organised into platoons of six vehicles, the 233s would accompany the lighter 222s and 223s, which in this case provides the communications vehicle for this particular reconnaissance sortie. Most of the vehicles involved carry a modicum of foliage to give a degree of protection from eagle-eyed Allied fighter pilots. The 233 normally carried a mixture of 33 high-explosive and armour-piercing rounds, although, as in the case of other armoured vehicles, crews frequently carried more rounds depending upon the sortie and likely opposition. The 233 proved to be an effective and well-liked machine. These 233s of the 1st Panzer Division are in Salonika in Greece in July 1943. The 233s were employed on all fronts and through to war's end. A number of these machines are seen here providing support to a mixed reconnaissance detachment of 222s, 223s and Volkswagen Schwimmwagens operating on the eastern border of Poland. The relief on the crew's faces is apparent as it becomes clear that the column of vehicles coming into view is not the enemy but another reconnaissance detachment returning from its own sortie. Although ordered in August 1940, the long gestation of the new 234 series of heavy armoured cars resulted in the first Puma not leaving the production line at Busing Nag until September 1943. Although similar in appearance to the 231 series it was designed to replace, the 234 employed a better protected armoured body. Just 101 Pumas were produced, these serving in armoured car companies of four Panzer divisions on both the eastern and western fronts. It was on the latter in service with the Panzer Lair and 2nd Panzer Division in the ferocious fighting in Normandy that this rare film was taken. Operating with the reconnaissance company of the former, in the fighting against the US forces around San Lo, the heavily camouflaged Pumas prowled the roads, their turret-mounted 50mm L60 gun giving them a far greater firepower than any German armoured car to date. The fate of Pumas in the Normandy campaign was little different to that of most other German armour following the Allied breakout and destruction of Army Group West in the Falaise pocket. In production from June 1944 until January 45, 200 20mm armed 234 stroke 1 heavy armoured cars served in the recce battalions of Panzer and Panzergrenadier divisions. The 234 stroke 3 fulfilled the support role within the reconnaissance units. It mounted the 75mm cannon, which by 1944 was no longer adequate in this role. This led to Hitler demanding this variant be upgunned to mount the more effective 75mm anti-tank gun to enable support units to deal with Allied armour. 